Hey everyone, welcome back to my main menu series. In this video, I'm going over the settings page and now we're gonna set up the functionality. Previously, we did, we did the UI, uh, but I split it into two just because um, it would have been an extremely long video and I don't really like to do anything more than an hour, uh, mainly because that also means I have to sit in front recording, hearing myself talk for more than an hour. So with that, in this video, I broke it part into three um, parts. We have where we go over the audio page controls and graphics. So each of them have their own settings. And then I just broke into pieces so I could record separately. Um, it just makes it a lot easier, mainly because I was fighting how I wanted to structure the key bindings and um, kind of had to play around with what I wanted. Uh, so with that, we'll be able to go into it. And then I do show you how you can start up a game and you're going to just load automatically whatever settings you previously had. So once you save the settings, the player will join in and they'll be able to just reload whatever they have. If they had volume at like 5% when they load the game, it's going to stay at 5%. So I just go over that as well. And um, yeah, let's get into it. All right. And just like most videos, uh, quick, just disclaimer on what I set up previously. Uh, so I set up just a basic sound system. We have our sound class mix, which is just for our master volume. And then we have the master, which will control all the other sounds, such as our music and then our SFX. So I set those up as well. Um, of course, for anybody that's creating their own sounds, make sure to um, set yours up accordingly, whatever you wish to use. Um, I think actually Epic installs these normally. I didn't have them in this, so I had to like copy from another folder in. Uh, so if they actually show up by default, then sweet, but I don't believe so. Uh, but just double check. Either way, you're going to have to learn how to set it up yourself. Uh, just quick disclaimer. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> Let's go into our UI. Oop, that's third person. By opening up our settings page, we'll take a look at what we have to do. So we have those three pages. Um, I briefly mentioned already, we're gonna break this into three segments. Uh, obviously it's gonna be just in one video, but just we're gonna start with the audio. And then from there, that means we actually have to open up our audio page. And I have it under widgets, settings tab, and then open up audio. With here, I have these three sliders. And then with that, we need to be able to adjust our settings accordingly to whatever our sound currently is. Uh, so going into the graphs, notice how we have our three sliders that are right here. If we are actually to drag them all off, like so, we have the three widgets that we created, which are boom, 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 just our text sliders that show here, but we're not actually going to put any type of functionality in here. This is only meant to set the value, set the name. We're going to do it all throughout this audio page. And then we're going to have to create a save game file so that we can store it. We're also going to need a game instance so that when we start up our game, we can reload those settings. So just to keep you in mind on what we're going to build. So the first thing we need to do is from the beginning of the game, we need to, um, or not the beginning of the game, we're not doing the game instance at this second, um, the beginning of opening up the audio page. So on construct of the audio page. So what we would need to do is do construct. And then from here, we wanna be able to load our save game file. So our save game file is what's gonna store the values that we need to set for these three. So let's go ahead, go over here, um, let's, let's create a new folder. Let's just call this like system. Um, for wherever you have your same game, save game objects, make sure to just store it there, uh, organize accordingly. But since I'm doing just a tutorial, I have it all just under the UI going into here. Let's go into blueprints type, save game. I'm going to do SG for save game. That's the naming convention. And we're going to name this settings. This is where we're going to hold all of our settings. Um, and then since we're here, let's just make our game instance real quick. We're not going to touch it at the moment. Uh, game instance. And then I name everything GI main. I think I watched a video on that a long time ago um, where somebody named that. And I just, I've held that forever. Okay. So not touching that, but we're going to go into our save game settings. 
So first thing we need to do in here is we are just going to create three float variables. So let's go into here. Let's turn this to float and open. And we're going to name this our master volume. It's going to be the three volumes we have. If you have um, like different types of settings, so like let's say you have SFX, but you also break it down even further, like let's say footsteps, um, um, I don't know, gunshot noises, whatever NPC dialogue, make sure there's just an according float variable for that. Uh, you can also structure things with like a map if you ever like have too many. You could go like string float and you can do stuff like that where it would be like um, SFX uh, music gunshot whatever it is whatever list you have available uh, that you're going to be using and but I obviously am not going to be doing that in this so let's just do that I'm just doing three floats because I'm only handling three sound settings. Um, my intention isn't to go further than that. But if you are, there's a quick note on how to go about doing that. Then, then we're going to do the other volume, which is music volume. And we're going to go into here and we're going to do SFX. And if you don't know that, that's sound effects. Uh, just a shortcut for it is SFX. All right. And then from here, shouldn't need anything. Uh, yeah, shouldn't need anything in here. I'll leave it up just in case. Uh, normally, I don't create really a lot of any functions inside the actual save game. They're usually just store variables. That's how I use it as. But of course, uh, whatever you feel like doing, go ahead and do it. Uh, just make sure your blueprints are clean. And then from here, what we want to do is when we start this game, we're going to load whatever variables we have here and set them to the current value that is set in these sliders. So we're going to go off and do uh, does save game. So normally with save game, you do does save game and then whether it exists, you do a branch and then you could do that. Now, if you're going to just do local files, so like you're going to store it locally, uh, you can do create, or hold on, I think save game is better. You can do load or create save game for local player. And if you read it, it will load its save game object in the specific slot in the local player, blah, 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 blah. All the fun jazz. But we're just going to do this. We're going to check to see if a current save game file exists. I'm going to promote this to a variable because to prevent any type of typos. We'll do SG for save game slot name. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we'll give it a value after we compile it. And I'm going to name it settings. This is what we're going to use for all three of our um, pages. So we'll go ahead and do that. From this branch, what we want to do is that if a save game file does not exist, we're going to create one. So we'll create save game. We're going to use our SG that we created. And then I'm going to promote this to a variable because we're going to be using it a few times. Of course, you don't have to save it as a variable. You could do other things such as um, just passing along to different um, like functions. So you can just drag this off and make a function where you pass that along, do whatever is necessary for yourself, organize accordingly. You can also do things with um, is it blueprint interfaces. I think you can go save game. Actually, no, you would probably have to set up blueprints with like the GI main or something. Anyways, not the direction I'm going. Load game to start not load stream level, load game from slot. We're going to plug in this so that we don't have to type anything out. Index is just going to stay at zero because we're going to be using this player. So from here, 
And then I want to set, oh, I didn't rename this. Let's just do SG settings. I want to be able to store that here, but since this doesn't go in, we're gonna need to cast to SG. Plug that in and bam. Okay. So from here, we have now successfully loaded our saved game. And if it does not exist, we'll be able to create a new one. But now we have to be able to change the values. So we'd have to take out three values here and make sure to set it into here. So if we were to drag this over, let's go over here. One thing is with this widget, let's click here. If we are open up here, we'll notice that this is a slider within a widget. So we have to drag it out. So if I were to go back into audio, it's slider values. And then I would actually have to do that for all three and do slider values. And well, I could do an ugly thing where it's um, master volume, music volume, SFX volume. And then I could go about setting value and then go about doing that three times, but I absolutely don't want to. So what we're going to do is we'll knock that off and then let's create a function. Ooh, can I, can you create functions? Create function, functions. Oh, that would have been cool if you could drag off and just do create function. So we'll create function here. What we need to do is we need to set the current values that we currently have. So let's set current values. Uh, I could use the variable or I could pass it along. Let's do, huh. We may be able to get rid of the variable, but let's see, um, save, game object we'll do sg settings object reference i wonder if so if i were to do this could i save myself from okay so going into here let's grab this I'm going to do control X. That's just to cut it. We're going to go back into here. Let's paste. Now I do have to do this three times. So just for cleanliness, we'll do a sequence. I know one individual enjoys the cleanliness. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then let me see. We'll go ahead and plug that in. Um, actually let's drag this up, drag it over here. Oh, come on. Don't auto save now. Move that up. We'll go ahead and set value. Try to keep this in a straight line. Is that straight there? There we go. There we go. And we'll go ahead and set value. Are we equally spaced? I don't know. Come on, add a pin, plug that in. And we'll drag that off to do the same thing over here. There we go. And then now from our save game object, I believe we can actually just type save game. Uh, oop, I scrolled out far too much. Oop. And then from here, we can go ahead and grab our SFX. We're going to plug that in here. going to get our music plug that in here control D uh, control D also only works if you highlight something so just also keep in mind for that uh, do to do, do and we'll plug that in 
Okay, so this will load the current. Oh, let me actually move these down a little. This is intentional. So what this does is this will load the current values that we have saved. However, it's not actually going to adjust our sound yet. So what we need to do is we need to be able to adjust our sound. So what we do is the sound things that I showed you in the very beginning of the video, we're going to be able to set the sound mix class override. And then from here, it looks like I'll probably have to slide this up a little. There we go. And then I'm assuming we'll probably have to slide this down a little. And then from the in sound, this is where I have my master sound select there. And then our sound class, and we use master sound class. So that controls the master volume. And you plug that in. And this is what we're going to be using for. How did it disappear for a little? That was weird. Um, anyways, plug that in, plug that in, change to the respective sound that you have created. We're going to go for music and then we'll go into, you have to type in SFX, um, SFX. I think that's the right one. It doesn't matter. This is for just tutorial purposes. We'll plug that in. All right. So with that, what would happen is that over here, if we have a save game, it will load the save game and then it will set the current values that we have using the save game file values. So perfect. That would get us to load the same ones. But the other thing we need to do is that upon changing these scrollers or the sliders, sorry, uh, we need to be able to set the new value. So with that, and that's where I think we still need this variable. Yeah, I was thinking we could probably get rid of it because we just pass it along. But unless I find the values. Mm, no, no, no. All right. So I was thinking of a possible way we could get out of it. But now we need to do is that upon changing any of these sliders, we will need to get a event called. So I want to create another function and we'll do bind on value changed. I think that's what it's normally called. We're going to grab these again and we're going to get the slider. All right, I'm kind of tired of getting the sliders. Can I, hold on, can we do create macro? And which one was this? Was this um, SFX slider? Go into here, plug that in. All right, let's, let's do that, let's do that. Go into here macro this was music slider plug that in and then we'll go ahead and do this macro we'll do master slider and we'll plug that in okay and then now that we did those actually let me go into the set current value and let's just drag these in because it's just so much cleaner. So we'll be able to delete, delete, plug that in, delete. And plug that in. All right. Love it. SFX music master. And then let me reorder these as well because I like everything to be in the same order. Cool. So with that, we have this nice and easy. We're going to now need to bind events 
so that we don't have to go into each individual slider and then set a function for this one's for master, this one's for music, this is for SFX. Uh, we're gonna have that all done just in the audio page. It makes it a lot easier on our lives. And then from here, we're gonna do bind event on changed, or bind event to on value changed, and then we're going to create. All right, we're gonna do this twice. Plug that in. Plug that in. Um, can I do this? Does that look neat? I think. Um, do that. I guess that's okay. Let's just have all of them. I don't know. Good enough. Okay. And then now from here, we want to create a matching event. And this is going to be um, master volume change. And then we're going to do the same thing, create matching event. We're going to name this music volume changed. And then we're going to do matching event. SFX volume change. Okay. And then from here, we're going to just copy that control X and go over here and paste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So go back over here. I think it's because I did matching event instead of like functions. Um, let's reconnect. And this one, music, this is SFX, compile. All right, we should be good. I think that I did that in a weird order. Probably could have just created the custom events first. Um, yeah. And this is just so that I just did it as a function because it keeps it clean. Um, so we need to bind... Oh, let's just drag it off. Oh, actually, hold on. We need to do, we need to do this. This has to go first. Because if we set the current values before we actually bind, that means we could load in and the values aren't actually going to be updated. Uh, so that should be good. Let me... Oh, we actually haven't done the event yet. I was gonna test it out, but we haven't gotten there yet. Okay, so from here, we want to get the save game. So now this is where we'll be able to update our save game every time. So we'll do, uh, what is it called? Uh, master volume set, plug that in. Uh, music. And then SFX. And plug that in. Okay. Okay. So now we set all of these. And then let's, let, let, let's take a look. Let's make sure we're on the right track. So let me go into main menu. I know I got a lot of level things. That's just because I use this for tutorials. Uh, let's go into here. Let's go into settings, audio. Let's just bloop, bloop, bloop. Controls, go back to audio. All right, so it's not updating. So we do that. Okay. And okay, I, I missed a step. Uh, what we need to do is after we need to save the game. So we could go into save game to slot. Drag that in. Oh, I don't know why it did that. And then we'll do this. Okay. And then 
let's do this. Let's drag it down a little. Pull that in here, pull that in there. Okay. Now we should be good to roll. Or not. Huh. Okay. Value is not updating upon construct. Is it because we're switching tabs? Let's do custom. Let's, uh, what should we call it? This is going to be just like loading the save. Let's just switch to audio. Whenever we switch to the audio tab, let's plug that in here. Let's open up um, the settings page. And then when we push, oh, Wait, hold on. Uh, so losing track a little. We actually don't need this clear widget. Uh, I was testing some common UI stuff and actually just figured out we don't need to do that. So anyways, going over here, let's do the switch to audio. So whenever we go to that page, we should load brand new. So let's go into here, settings, audio. Let's change these values. Still nothing. Okay. Going back. What are we doing here? So if we go over here, let's see. Oh, okay, okay. I I see. We need to do this. So actually, I think we could do. Can we do that? And that? Oh. Never mind. Hold on, undo. We'll do that. Now let's settings audio. There we go. All right. So we got everything loading. Control audio. Perfect. 150. Boom. Awesome. Okay. Now we have our audio is loading. Perfect. That's what we like to see. Now we just need to make sure when we start the game, um, we load our current settings. Also, you'll notice that the values are starting at the bottom. So let's actually just put it in the halfway mark. So let me make sure for starters that our sliders scale based off of, I like to do zero to hundred. I don't remember if I did that before. So one thing is I'm just gonna do zero to hundred, zero. 100. We never want to go up and we never want to go down. Zero, 100. Just setting that range. That's in the settings, but now we want to go to the slider itself. And then let's just double check. Um, okay, I set to zero, 100. If you didn't, or if I accidentally did this without you guys, just make sure to set that. Minimum value is a zero, max value as a hundred. Um, yeah, yeah, I set those two, cool. I like that a lot better than doing 0 0.0 to 1.0. All right, now this is where our game instance comes in handy and where we're gonna do all the rest of them. We're gonna go back to system, we're gonna go GI main. From here, uh, we need event initialize. So this is when we start the game. And we're actually gonna use a lot of what we used in here. So I'm actually gonna copy all of this. We're gonna go in here, paste, plug that in, save game. And then we're going to name that settings. And do we need a variable? 
Uh, I'm not sure if we do. Uh, let's let's try without. And I don't think we need to create a save game file because we don't have current settings. And if somebody goes to the settings page, we'll go ahead and create one. All right, so we'll go over there. And then from here, we need to, let's create a function. We're gonna do load sound. Wow, that's some awful spinning sound. Settings. Um, we're gonna do an input. Save game. Or SG. We'll just do SG settings. Just to keep that the same. And then from here, what we want to do is we need to set all the current audio. So what we did with, was it set current values? This. We need these three. So we're going to just copy these. Go over here and do that. Um, probably do another sequence. Nope, I zoomed out quite a lot, so uh, if you guys can't see, I'm gonna plug all that in, plug that in. We're gonna go to SG settings, control D, control D. SFX. Um, which one was this? Music? And then master. And let me slide all this over because we like to be a little neat. All right, and with that, we should be able to load into our game and we have all the current settings. Awesome. Okay, so that concludes the audio. We'd be able to set it into our settings page. We reload it upon game. And now let's go into our control page. All right, so this one is gonna be a bit of a handful. So let's go into our controls. So previously I created just these test inputs because we didn't really have anything. Uh, but for what we're going to do, we don't actually need any of this because we're gonna populate our own. Uh, so the only one I'm gonna leave is mouse sensitivity because that's not really an input. Uh, and then what we want to do is get another vertical box we're gonna just put it right here. And then we're gonna turn that into a variable vertical box. And we'll just name this um, just hotkeys or uh, key bindings, wh whatever you wanna really name it. And then we want to get a button, which we're gonna do button base at the bottom. This one is gonna be reset to default, or if I can spell default. Uh, cool, and then let's do this. So it kind of like fits in over there a little. Um, actually, let's do fill, but. Okay, wait, maybe not fill. Uh... All right, that looks a little ugly. Let's reset hotkeys. We'll do button. Uh, do, 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 do. I really don't like fill. 0.1? Okay. I guess we can... I guess we can leave that as, as is right now. Uh, anyways, that's our reset button. So when we want to reset all of our inputs, we'll be able to do that. So let's go into our graph. 
what we want to do is actually very similar towards what we did with the other page. So we want to go ahead and we're going to snag all of this. Right. Just hit confirm. We have these we don't need, so I'll just get rid of those. All right. Name the switch to controls. Promote that to a variable. Settings. Promote that as well. Switch to controls. Um, and then let's, I want to clean this up. Let's do collapse function. Load settings. Then let's let's knock out mouse sensitivity first because it's the one thing that just kind of doesn't match with what we're gonna do with all the other key bindings. We're gonna go in here. So just like we did with the other one, we wanna grab this slider. Slider bind to on value changed, create. We wanna create a matching event i guess we could create a matching function i guess let's do uh update mouse sensitivity okay let's go back over here that should be good so from here we need to be able to Oh, I don't like this. Hold on. Let's, let's do this and then drag you into there. Right, it's, it's a little better. Okay. So from here, what we need to do is load whatever current settings we have. So we have to go into our settings, into system, wherever you have it stored, SG. We wanna make another float variable called mouse sensitivity. And then just like the others, we wanna set a range, but for this, I'm doing zero to one. So mine is, think of it like percent, zero to, uh, Oh, maybe saying percent probably didn't work, but yeah, I'll go over it in a bit. Um, let's not get sidetracked. <laughs> we want to set default to one. So our default is going to be one and then um, you'll, they'll be able to basically slow it down. You can also do something where you want the default to be, I don't know, it's set to 0 0.5, um, whatever you want to do. You can also set it to where if you wanted to allow someone to make their mouse even faster. So you could do like zero to two, you can have the default to one. Uh, hold on, let's do that. So it would default here and then you'd allow them to either slow it down or you can increase it. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it at, at one, but just let you know that that is something you can do. All right. Shouldn't need to reopen that. And then from this slider, we want to set value. Let's do, come on, give me a straight line. That's not straight. All right, close enough. We'll go mouse sensitivity. And plug that in. All right, so now that we have our mouse sensitivity, when the game starts, we'll load with whatever current settings we have. If we have not previously done anything, it's just gonna load our default one, uh, which is gonna be one, which should be whatever your standard is going to be. Uh, I recommend your standard to always be at one, just depending on how high and low you allow the volume to go is completely up to you. Uh, just make sure to set the defaults into the settings where I showed you. Okay, so now we have to fix the update mouse sensitivity. So when we go over here, 
when we change the value, we want to set the mouse sensitivity to this. And then from here, we want to make sure we save the new value. So we'll do save game to slot. I know a lot of people do like an apply button so that people can like apply their changes. I, however, am not a fan of apply buttons because if I'm making the change, why tell me to click a second button just to make sure it goes. So I apply the settings the moment you change it. Um, for people that just want to confirm, do whatever you want. Uh, do, 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 do. Just um, for those that are doing an apply button, you would just not put this save here and you would have a apply button that upon clicked, you're going to save all of these values into the save game slot. All right, so one of the things with mouse sensitivity is we have it saved to our save game, but we need to apply it to either our character or our controller, wherever we have our inputs. So let's go into, I think it's third person inputs default here, I think. Yeah, they do. Okay, okay. So Sorry, my thought is I generally like to put inputs in the player controller, but by default, they go into the character. Uh, let me move all of my non-related tutorial stuff. So let me get this over here. Okay, this is not the same thing. Okay, okay. Zooming back into here. So what we're gonna do with our sensitivity is we're basically going to change how fast our camera moves and our camera is gonna to need to multiply based upon that saved game that we have. The only thing with saved game is that basically every time you load into um, a game, you would have to, I guess, create a saved game variable and then multiply it. Um, and one of the things is you'd have to do that every single time. What makes it easier than every time you open a new level and then have to like create the save game, you can just store it into your game instance and then you can pull your game instance every time. So what we're going to do is basically pass along the same variable into our game instance. Um, I know I have one around here somewhere. Uh, gee, I mean, oh, there's two. And so I had something weird happen with my GI main where there was two of them with the same name. And um, that's just because I did another tutorial with this, which means I probably should space out these projects later on in the future. But nonetheless, we have this set up and then also just make sure when you go into project settings, game instance, make sure that in the drop down menu you select on the GI main. I'm not sure if I went over that yet, but just reiterating. And with that, um, I had to recreate this. So actually I ended up doing create save game object here and then I promoted it to a variable. So, I mean, you could just create save game and then you'll be able to make that promote it to variable. And the reason for that is because we need to get the mouse sensitivity. And we're going to set it here as well. The mouse sensitivity float. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, it's not being used anywhere, so. And then set it. So like that, we'll be able to set it. So when we start the game, if there's a previous settings, you'll just be able to start and reload and use that immediately. So back into here, what we want to do is that also when we change this, we want to do the same thing. So we want to get game instance. I'm going to cast to GI main. Another thing is if you don't want to do casting, you can do blueprint interfaces. And with that, you'll just have to go into here. Uh, Blueprint interface. Um, I don't care what I call it right now. And then create a function.
go into here, class settings, and then you can go ahead and add that interface. And then from there, it makes it a lot easier to like communicate between the two. Um, if you know how blueprint interfaces work, that should have been enough information. I'm not doing, doing it here. However, you can definitely go ahead and do that. Um, if you just want to make blueprints, not reliable upon other blueprints. Nonetheless, let's go back into here, go to controllers. We're going to mouse sensitivity. We're going to set it. And then we want to get the, I'm just going to paste it over here. Oops. And we'll do that. So now when we, let's see, we save the game, we update it. Let's go in here. I feel like I'm missing a step. I'm missing a step. <laughs> so we're able to update it accordingly. We're saving it, we're setting it. But I think what I'm missing is that load settings, switch to controls. In the settings page, if we go over to control here, switch to controls. Go over here. Nice. And just like that, we're saving the value, we're loading it. But now we need to be able to change our controller. So if we were to hit play and go into the game, we want to slow down this camera if we were to ever change that value. So depending on where your controls are, for me, I put it in the player controller. I have the move, the jump, uh, the look, and we're going to want to change the camera looking. So let me move all of this up. If it's in the controller, it's going to be very similar towards what I'm doing now. You just, um, instead of doing like player controller, it should just say self. What we need to do is get the GI main. So we're going to get game instance. S2 GI and remote. From here, we'll be able to get GI main mouse sensitivity. Space these out a little further because we need some room. Because what we're going to do is we're going to multiply these values into the mouse sensitivity. So multiply. This is why I mentioned having a default value of one, because then it will set the default to whatever your default look or whatever your default camera is. So we'll do that. Let's move this down, plug that in and here. So if somebody slows it by 50%, which means it's going to be at 0.5, then it will multiply it into the X and then it will be half the amount it used to be, which means they're looking at half speed. We want multiply again. Oop, let's do this, plug that into there, plug that into there and drag here. All right. So with this, if we go into controls, slow it down heavily, hit play. Oh, looks like doing the opposite. I sped it up. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. All right, so I ended up finding out what the problem was and there was, uh, so this will scale from zero to one. However, our slider that we have created, if we went over here, it's set to zero to 100 because we're using the same slider. Now you could create a second um, widget, which would then do from zero to one, or you can just go into here. Well, off of this, we can set max 
value. And you can set it to one or whatever your max value is. Um, I'd probably recommend creating a second one, especially if you're doing different max values, such as like, I don't know, maybe you want to allow them to even go faster. You can set it to like a three and it will scale more. But if we go into here, we'll notice, oh, I think I still left it at three. Oh, no, no, it's at one. So go over here. We can slow it all the way down to here and we'll hit play. And it's super slow. We go back into play. Back to one. And my camera's back. So we have mouse sensitivity. Awesome. And now for the really fun part, we're now going to go into the um, hotkeys or key bindings, whatever you want to call it. So let's get into that. Go into the hotkeys from here. And we're actually going to include just another button. This is going to be our reset button. So we're just going to boom, boom, just do reset. Uh, that should look fine for now, actually. Or maybe we could do a fill, do a 0 0.1, 0 0.2, maybe. Go into here, let's decrease the padding to like a hundred. Wow, you are still, all right, there we go. Okay. So the purpose of this is so that whenever we click it, we can reset a specific input. So if somebody wants to reset, reset one thing instead of resetting everything, uh, they'd be able to. So this is what we originally had set up, but we're going to be doing a lot more. So we actually don't need any of this. Um, oh, let's rename this button. It's BTN reset. And then on base clicked, we'll leave that down over there because there's a few things we're gonna need. So on key select, uh, okay. And then we need construct. All right, so from here, what we want to do is we're, are going to need the user settings, so the enhanced input user settings. And to get that, what we would do is create a variable, user settings, and it's going to be user, or sorry, enhanced user settings, experimental. Um, and if you hover on top of it, it's, it is in fact experimental, but if you go into over here, project settings, uh, we're going to have to turn it on. And then over enable user settings experimental, make sure to toggle that on. Um, that is important so that we're going to be able to map everything and save all of these settings. Does not require you to reset it, uh, reset the editor either. It's just something that you have to turn on. And because we have that turned on, let's also, we're going to have to instance editable exposed on spawn. These are hotkeys we're going to generate in a loop. So uh, under our control, we're going to have to get these settings and pass it into this hotkey. So let's, uh, we don't need that anymore. We may need this. Let's put that on the side. I'm trying to gather my brain because this actually this took me a long time to set up. Um, and what we want to do is every time we open up the control page, we want to reset everything. Uh, so we're going to get the vertical box. We're going to clear children. This is why I made it in a second one is because obviously we don't want to delete the mouse sensitivity or the reset to default from here, because we toggled on that, um, enhance input user settings. Now we can use it. So we're going to go into enhance. Uh, I think it's this one. Yeah. You want to look for one that doesn't have the input required yet enhanced. And this is, um, I ended up finding this how to set this up through, what was it, Pyrodev. Um, 
thankfully he had a well-structured video a lot of them a lot of the input videos are quite old and they're using um, different settings that are no longer usable in 5.3 okay so what we're going to do is we're going to get the current key profile this is just the current profile for the user and then from there we want to get all player mapping Ooh, not that mapping rows so all of the player mappings that they have let me do this and then we want to get all the values that are off of this and one thing i actually forgot is that over here if we go here we want to promote this to a variable we're going to be passing this along into uh, the hotkeys. That's what this variable is for. Just name this user settings. And we'll lift this up. Lift up. Perfect. And then now this is going to be a series of stuff that looks a little complicated, but I promise that once you do it, uh, you don't got to touch it again. <laughs> So we're gonna loop through all of the values that we get off of all of the key mapping rows, and then we'll want to break this. But when upon breaking it, you actually just get a set. Uh, so with a set, can't really do anything to it for our purpose. So we wanna turn it into an array. And then by turning into an array, we're gonna do the exact same thing or we're gonna loop it. And actually we wanna loop it with a break. Uh, the purpose for looping with a break is so that if you're only looking for, let's say, um, mouse controls, keyboard controls, or uh, gamepad controls, things like that, uh, you'll be able to go through that. Uh, for this purpose, I'm going to get the first slot of every single input key that we have. Um, and then I'll go into the input keys in a second. Let's set this up first. And then we'll make it so that you can use specific inputs and ignore other inputs. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to break this. So after making an array, then we're going to break it. And then now we actually have values. So we have the mapping name. We have the display name. This is going to be used for our text. And then we have the current key. And you'll notice default key. So that is actually what's going to be used for our reset button is that we are going to end up pulling that default key later. All right, so from here, what we want to do is I'm gonna get the first slot. Er, sorry, I think I have to do equal. First, we're going to now branch. After getting the first slot, we are going to promote this to a variable. And then to clean this up, let's get this up here. Do that. All right. I'm going to rename this to bound key. And then that's what the break's for. I'm going to drag it all over here. Move it all over here. Kind of tidy this up a little. All right. So we found the key. And what that means is when we're going through this, we want to locate the first slot. Once we get that first slot, we are going to find it and break this loop so we don't continue looking through all of them for no reason. So from here, um, oh, let me see. Uh, one thing just to show the controller people. So you can do break and then from here you can do equal. And then you can also specify if it's a gamepad, plug that in. And then for gamepad controls, you'd be able to find the key for gamepads instead of the first slot. Um, just to let you guys know that that is the way there. Uh, I'm not really going into controls, so like, at least you know that it exists, but um, once again, I don't focus on gamepads. And then from here, now that we have found the key, we are going to create our widget. This is going to be our hotkeys or whatever you want to name it. From here, we are going to need to get our user settings and we're going to need to pass along this key. So this key is a player key mapping. So this contains all of the mapping data that we need to pass along. 
Uh, so we're going to need to create a variable for that. Um, I forgot to compile. So that's why this did not actually show user settings. So user settings plugs in there. And then now we need to get the key. So player key mapping. Player key mapping. And I'm going to rename this to just key map. Should refresh this now. Oh, I skipped that. Now let's refresh, plug that in. So we added our widget. Last thing we need to do is we need to be able to add child. And something I like to do with adding everything in my vertical box is I just like to do the horizontal. Uh, Is it not working? Oh, add child to vertical box. I used the wrong one. That makes sense. Horizontal, vertical. Just fill, fill, keeps it kind of easy. Ooh. And we're just gonna move this down. Move it over here. Hey, stop, all right. So what that would do is that if anything is found here, it is mappable, it will create here. Now, the next thing is that we need to make sure that our inputs are mappable. So after it finishes settings, we want to go into our inputs. From our inputs, there is two ways to do it. So under actions, you know how we have all of these inputs here, we can actually set it to um, whatever we want. So. Um, I'm not going to do all of these because I just want to display some because it takes a bit. So what you'll need to do is under user settings. Oop, it looks like I forgot to change that back. You change that to player mappable key settings. So you could do this on the high level. So for any jump, we'll name this jump. And we'll name this jump. And what that means is that if we were to go into play, go into settings, controls, didn't appear. And that's because we actually didn't do anything in the hockeys yet. So anyways, I uh, skipped a step once again. So there's doing that, but obviously for looking and moving, it may not be as easy. So if we go into IMC default, you can do this from specific buttons. So where we see jump over here, you have settings behavior where there is override and you can actually change this to whatever you want. So we already have jump. So if we actually tried that, it tells you that you can't use it. Uh, we don't need to do it for here. I'm going to do both just to show you. So we're going to inherit the settings from the IA jump. However, for moving, clearly we have multiple. So let's change this. So we're going to go to override player map. We're going to name this uh, forward. You could do like move forward, move backwards, whatever. Uh, I'm going to go through all of these because now it's just all the same thing. Uh, backwards. Make sure you do a name and display name. That is important. Um, override. Left. Left. Da, 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 da. Right, right, okay, and boom, 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 then look, I mean, we could do camera as well, just override. I'm not actually going to change it because I'm pretty sure you'll break stuff with doing camera, so just because it uses like a mouse, mm. all right. Hitting save again. So now that we made the three that we want mappable, well, technically it's like eight because of the four keys. Now we need to be able to set up our hotkey here. And this needs to take all the information that we passed into it so that it can promptly appear for everything that is shown. So 
what we need to do is go under um what was it our key map let's just drag all of these down we don't need that right now off of our key map we're going to break it from here this shows us the name so we want to get the text set text and we'll just plug in display name And then from here, we're going to grab our input key selector. Um, set key, I think it's select. Set selected key, that was the word I was looking for. Split, we're splitting because as there is other options such as like holding down shift, control, alt, and command, uh, we're not actually gonna use that, we're just using the key only. Uh, so all of these are just going to be off. But that is also to note that if you ever want something to require holding down key or control or et cetera, um, you have the ability to turn that on. So with that, we want to grab the current key. So we'll always put in the current key that we have. The only time we're going to use default is when we want to reset it. So perfect. Upon construct, let's see if that works. Go in here, control. And it's not. Okay. So we're getting our key mapping. It's exposed. Our user settings. If we go into controls over here, switch to controls, user settings, switch to controls. Let me construct. Try that. Nope, still nothing. Okay. Let's take a look at what's happening here. We have a vertical box. We're loading these settings. From our settings, we are grabbing save game. We have our mouse sensitivity that we handle on our own. That's fine. Completely irrelevant to this. So once we go through here, we would end up going into clearing the children. We then set user settings based upon local player subsystem. Okay. 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 I know what I did. Let's go into our controller. So let's move up here on event begin play. As you notice, I didn't put anything for our mapping context. I believe it's still in the third person. So let's, let's actually, we're, we're going to delete all that. I'm not using the player controller for that. There's the other inputs that I don't really want to touch right now. Um, nonetheless, for boom, boom, we need to go and get oops, enhanced and then of course do an it is valid check and then from here let's see um i'm trying to remember what it was let me um user enhance user settings and then we have to add the mapping context go here and then from here we need to do is mapping registered so the imc is imc registered branch if it is then we don't have to do anything. And then if it is not, we need to do um hold on. I'm gonna drag this over here. We need to register the input mapping context. 
of default. Okay. And actually, I'm going to take that. Just move it towards the end because I don't think it should be in the front. Uh, okay. Let me... Still nothing. Okay. I am missing a step here. We have the player controller enhanced. We're getting user settings. We're registering it. All right. And we go into here. All right, let me debug this first and you won't even know I'm done. All right, so once again, the issue was on my fault. What it was is my main menu doesn't have a player class, so it wasn't actually loading anything up. So everything I was setting in PC and game wasn't working, so I just set it to where I have that controller. Um, so with that, uh, just be careful because having this controller, if you set it to game mode only, um, you don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I have blueprints. I'm going to copy this and I'm gonna do PC menu. And then I'm gonna open that up. And then I'm gonna just do, whoop. I don't actually need any of the inputs down here, but I need this portion available for me so that I'm able to populate everything. And with that, make sure you set it accordingly. So I'm gonna have PC menu, hit play, settings, controls. We have everything up here, except one thing, my button is hiding over here, and that's because this is not a scroll box. Um, what I'm actually going to do is go into designer um, for controls. For this, I'm actually gonna turn it to like 0 0.5. That should give us enough space. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. So with that, we have everything appearing as such. And now we can move forward with what we wanna do next. Going back into our hotkeys, let me close all these extra tabs that I opened up because of that long process. On construct, looks good. Now we're gonna go take our key selector. From here, we're going to make a Boolean. So it's going to be, um, is key changed? To just confirm that we are changing the key. We'll do a branch. And then if we are, we wanna just set it back to nothing. And then from our input selector, we wanna get the second event. So when a key is in fact selected, this is just telling us that we are changing something. Uh, so this is where we would just set it to true, that we are changing something. This is just to stop it from running at different times. All right, so let me move that over here, clean that up a little bit. And then what we want to do with this key is we are going to break it. This breaks it into an input cord. This allows us to get the specific key. Uh, because you just can't get a key from here. You just get the input cord display. Uh, so by splitting it lets us know because you can actually grab if somebody is holding shift, control, alt, um, uh, command, all of those fun jazz. Hey, can you close for me? Uh, there we go. Oh, come on. All right. All right. From here, we want to promote that to a variable. Promoting this to a variable. This will be our key. Um, you can also just name this to current key. <laughs> From our current key, what we want to do is we want to now, let's move this down. We are going to need to use our key map because now we need to change our input. So we need the player key mapping because that's where our input, inputs are located. So we're gonna break that. 
we're gonna get a long list over here. And no matter how far I move these things down, it seems I have to keep doing it. Um, okay, so from here, now that we have broke that, we need to, um, let's see, can we do it from here? Map, layer, key, args, there we go, from here. So we're gonna make this. This is going to be our key that we're going to put into the new layer key. So we're gonna to need to take the necessary information to pass it along. Um, for those that are using different like hardware devices, uh, such as like, I don't know, PlayStation, whatever it is, split this, you'll get even larger list. Uh, let's actually connect the mapping name. We're going to connect the slot to match the same slot. Uh, we're going to connect key because we want to use the same key. Uh, notice how we have default key. This is exactly the same thing we're going to do, but we want to reset it. And then from here, just take the um, device ID class name, plug that in. Uh, you may actually have to use device ID hardware device identifier uh, and plug that in. Um, Again, I don't use game pads, but uh, that's how you can actually identify. So we'll be able to pass that along. Uh, I'm just gonna wait, close that. From here, what we want to do is we're gonna grab our user settings, which is here. There's a few things we need to do. Map player key. So if we move this closer, plug that in. Now we'll be able to tell the user system that, hey, we're going to be changing this and we're adding a new key. And then from there, we're going to now apply the settings. So we're gonna apply. So we have our changes that we're doing. And then from here, we want to save settings. And let's do that. So now we'll be able to change them we are saving them. And then we also want to be able to reset our keys. So moving that over here, this is what this reset button is going to be used for. From here, we want to get our input key selector. We're going to set selected key We're going to grab this, or just grab all of this, copy, paste, plug that in. And what we're gonna do is disconnect that key, and then let's connect default key. So we just change that. We have that plugged in. And I actually messed up here. Um, you don't use current key. We have to use this key, this current key. See what happens with naming is it messes you all up. Uh, so let me move that over here. Player argument, move that. What we're doing is we're taking this key and we're plugging it into here. Uh, you could also just do that. Um, instead of the current key and promoting it to a variable actually. Um, but that will do that. So let's go back over here, make sure we have default key. This will reset this button and then save it. And the other thing we want to do is let's do a custom event. We're gonna call this reset key. I got caps on reset key. And we're gonna plug that in. All right. Um, key selected. Oh, forgot to split this. And we'll do default key. All right. Hit play, settings, controls. Um, I'm gonna hit T. Go back to controls, T is still there. So moving forward is it's now T and this should hit it to W. And it did. So let's actually change to E for this. I'm gonna go to my game. 
pressing E, and I'm jumping. And when I hit space right now, it's not working, but E works. If I close it and go and play again, E still is my jump. All right. So now let's go back to our settings. We're able to save them and you can reset it back to normal. Now let's get our reset to default working. I know it looks ugly right now, but I mean, that it is what it is right now. Um, this video itself is already extremely long. So let's go into button on button clicked. We're going to get the vertical box. Get all children. We are going to loop. We are now going to cast to hotkeys and reset. And this will now reset every single button that you have. So let's go over here, hit random keys. And then reset and we get everything back to normal, except Why is up move here? Forward, backwards, left, right. I think that's one of my inputs I just had on for no reason. Um, is this? Of course, autosave happening right now. I think while I was experimenting, I may have messed with the wrong folder. Um, Let's go to look, none, move. Oh, there it is. Okay, turn that off. Let's go back over here. Okay, okay, there we go. There are the controls I want to show. Now, another thing you could do is that um, I have everything in kind of a random order and a populist random order. If you want a very specific, you're going to have to either um, create them based on whatever input name it is or assign everything to a specific key. Um, I'm not going into that because um, my goal is just to show you how to get all of these in. And honestly, having them all populate is the easiest thing to do. So huh. from here, now everything saves, it loads uh, per game. And that concludes our controls. And next we're gonna go into graphics, which is going to be um, a lot less um, complicated. All right, so let's get into our graphics. So we're gonna go in over here and upon construct, what we want to do is we're going to get game user settings. We scroll in as further as I can. We're going to load these settings. Perfect. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this and, oh, oh, I wish you could promote it to a variable. I don't think you can. All right, that's fine. I mean, it's a single node if I ever want to pull it back in. But from here, we're going to do a sequence because there's a few things we're going to have to do here. Uh, we're going to have to be able to get the resolution. We're going to have to get the um, quality of the graphics, whether it's like low, medium, um, hi, what, whatever names you want to give it. And then we also have to do whether it is uh, full screen, um, what, whatever it may be. Um, let's go into here. The easiest one is our V-Sync. So from here, uh, we can actually, I think I could just pull it off maybe. Uh, V-Sync. Is VSync enabled? We'll do that. Let me actually, I'm gonna do that because we're gonna have to pull off this quite a lot. Um, if VSync is in fact enabled, uh, what we'll do is, this is a checkbox, uh, check. Set. Um, I forgot how I have this checkbox set up. Let's go into checkbox in here. Um, let's 
it's called checkbox. Checkbox and checkbox. That's set is checked into here. Pull that into there. Um, how can I clean this up? Pull that. Pull that. From here, our vSync, if it is currently turned on, it will turn on. If it's not, um, it will be off. So then let's also go into, mm, we're gonna have to bind event. So we're gonna grab this, copy here. Bind event on check state change. Create matching event. Then is V sync. I think the V is actually capitalized. Okay. And then branch. And then from the branch, we need to turn on vsync. So we'll have to get user game settings. I think no matter what, we're gonna have to, and then we'll do, no, no, no. We're, we're gonna have to do this twice, I think. Maybe, hold on, set the sync enabled and then set v sync enabled okay and then from here we'll just do apply settings save settings Can I do this? Plug that into here. Cool. Okay. And then actually I'm gonna, let me delete that. Copy paste. All right. So we're applying the settings, we're saving it. Sweet. Vsync will turn on, will turn off, and um, my bad, I forgot to click that. Let's just take a look. Controls, graphics, Vsync on. Let's go back in, Vsync is on. Go back, settings, graphics. Oh. Okay. VSync is turning on automatically, and that's because I forgot to hit that checkbox. Go back over here, turn it off. All right, turn it back on. Cool. VSync is up to go, so we can drop that off. We don't need to touch this anymore. Let's just add a comment. We'll do um, turn on off. Vsync. Write that all the way down there. All right, we got this nice and done. We'll move this over. Now let's handle resolution. So resolution is going to require us to add things into our uh, resolution box. So we need kind of a drop down we have our default options which is just the 1920 but we need to actually create our own Ooh, what's the custom event okay that'll look cool but there was nothing there all right anyways <laughs> so from here from the user settings we want to 
get screen resolution. We're going to promote this. Plug that in. From here, let's name this to resolution. We want to split. And what we want to do is grab resolution, drop down, list. And I'm actually, I'm going to create a macro again, like we did before. And we'll do this uh, drop down resolution. And we'll drag that into here. So we have that. From here, we want to do refresh options. Then we want to do selected option. We're going to append. So the way we're going to set up all options is going to be just like we have here. We have 1920 times 1080. So we have the X in the middle. So for the center, we want to do a space X space. And then the first thing we're going to do in 1920. Or no, 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 no. We're not doing 1920. We're, we're plugging in the X and Y values. So we'll drag that down. We'll drag that down. All right. That will set the first option. But then comes the problem of we need all of our other options. So. What we want to do is not on construct, we want to do on pre-construct. From here, this is where we're going to create our resolution option. So what we are going to do is we're going to take this resolution that we have here. We're going to control D, copy and paste, and we're going to name this resolution options. And then we want to turn this into actually an array. And then from here, we're going to loop. I actually got a lot of these settings options from my friend Jed, who works on a project with me. Great stuff. And he actually helped organize this a lot better than what my original stuff was. So just giving him some credit on that as well. So going through here, what we want to do is we're going to create different options. And then we're going to add option. Let me take this append that we did before, plug that in, and let's plug that, give us some space. And then we are also going to do, let's see. Let's leave that. And then we want to grab this again and we'll do refresh options. And all we have to do is now compile and let's add some options. So we have some standard options into this list. Uh, 1920 is basic, but let's do like 1280 by 720. We'll add another one. So it's 1600 by 900. We'll do 1920 by 1080. We'll do 2560 1440. Those are a list that I already had like pre-made. So that should give us a different dropdown. Let's take a look. Settings, control, graphics. Yep, and we have that here. So if we do 16, we have that full list, cool. 
but 1920 is showing up twice and I think that's because we have our option. So let's actually go into the widget itself and let's remove that. Go into here, settings, graphics, nice. So now we have the four options that are available there, sweet. All right, and then what we also want to do is that upon changing the resolution, so we need to grab here and we'll want to do on selected changed create event we'll do a matching event and we'll do uh resolution changed and what we want to do is upon here what we need to do is How do you, I'm trying to remember how to split, you split. Okay. And then we'll go into set the current resolution from here, split, convert to int, convert to int. And then from here, let's just do a print. Let's just make sure we did this right. And all right, yep, looks like we're doing good. Perfect, 1920, awesome. All right. So now we need to do is we need to set our resolution. So just like we did with our other stuff, let's go ahead and copy here. Plug that into here. Set resolution. And plug that in. Awesome. And with that, we're able to now change our resolution size. Uh, let's add a comment. So on, or let's just do resolution drop down menu selection changed. All right. So with that, we now have two of them taken care of. Now we need to handle the other two. So let's move on to the full screen. So what we're gonna do is off of here, let's scroll back in and we're gonna want to get full screen mode. This is an enum and uh, to just show you the options equal, um, it will equal into either full screen, a uh, windowed full screen or windowed. Uh, I usually just refer to this as borderless. Um, for me, that's pretty simple, but we're gonna promote this. This is going to be window mode, or oh, if I can I plug that in here, and then we'll do enum to stream, and we'll set selected, oh, hold on. Um, we need to get the drop down from display mode. Let's change this to display mode just to match. Uh, slider, not slider, drop down. And I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna collapse to a macro. Drop down um, display mode. We'll plug that in here. And from here, we'll do uh, set selected option. 
plug that in here. We'll do that. And then what we need to do is that, well, first let's space this out a bit more. Bind on select and change. Okay, clearly didn't go further enough. Create. Matching event. We're going to name this. Um, display mode change. Just to kind of match. And then from here, what we need to do is let's do display here, find option index, pull in here. And we want to then select Um, sorry, select, there we go, from here, and we'll select from here. So we'll have our three options that we want, which are going to be uh, full screen, uh, windowed full screen, and are we missing an option? Where's the uh, add pin? Oh, okay, sorry. All right, so this is where we get the three. So we're gonna find the three edit here. So depending on whatever name it is inside here, that is what we would do. So from that, we're just gonna use our default options because you can actually set the three default. Uh, and we have full screen, we have borderless, and we have windowed. Um, ooh. Thing is, it's called windowed full screen. So if it's borderless, it's not going to equal out to one of these. Um, I think the easiest thing would just be to change it back to windowed full screen. Because I, I mean, I could do like equals. Hey, what? Equal. And do like borderless. And do branch. And then I can just do like set display mode to windowed full screen. Um, yeah, so I guess we could do that without changing because I, I don't like windowed full screen as like a name. Uh, let's just see if that works. I think I have to do as like a standalone. So let's go into a standalone game. Yeah, 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 yeah. Settings, graphics, um, 1920. All right, that didn't work. What if I go to borderless? Nothing's working. Love it. But that's also because I can scale it. Come on. Oh, like see. All right, full screen. All right, so it's not working yet. And that's probably because we set it to here, but we didn't actually change it in the game settings yet. So go figure. So what we need to do is we need to set the window mode, which is going to do game settings. Plug that in. We're going to now do set full screen mode. And plug that in. And just like all of these, we're going to apply and save it. Control D.
I'm actually going to change these to the top side. All right. Try that again. Yep, 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 yep. Settings, control, graphics, 1920. Full screen. All right. Still ain't working. Because then when we go back, it looks like nothing's happening. All right. Don't love that. And I think it's because we're not actually setting it upon games. Star, maybe? Hmm. Let's, let's figure this out. Okay, so like the fifth time we debugged, but it actually, it is working. So um, if we went into graphics, we're technically full screen, uh, and then I do windowed. Um, if we went through, looks like our game mode is in fact wind mode. Ah, windowed, and then it switches to window. So it is working. Um, yeah, go to 1080, it switches to there. Uh, the only thing is I was doing like standalone and for some reason it was looking a little weird, but when I went to new editor, everything worked it as it, everything worked as intended. Uh, yeah. So here go to borderless. Do like 720 and then we do see that it intensifies a bit more. Okay. It just looked a little odd because, uh, yeah, debugging. All right. So let's go back into our settings. So it looks like we need to comment this again. So we'll name this comment um, display mode, drop down menu selection changed. Okay. Now for the last piece, which is just the graphics and for graphics, what we are going to do is we just need to basically control the scalability. So if we go into here, this very, very nasty looking thing, um, let's do that. And straighten here. We'll do that at a pin. Scale that over. And from here, we're going to do get over. Oop. Sorry, from here, get overall scalability. We're going to promote this. This will get the current scale that we're using. So, like the lowest graphics index uh, to the highest. Um, that there it's a little gross i really don't like it this is <sighs> all right i feel like i'm gonna have to succumb to not so beautiful at the moment uh so we'll just go ahead and do here i'm gonna rename this to graphics index this video is already beyond as long as I wish. So over here, we're going to go into here, uh, drop down. Pops to macro. Drop down graphics. Like that. Set selected index. Here. And then over here in my graphics, I have the five very low, low, medium, high, very high. Okay. Just remember, you have five options in Unreal Engine. There are five indexes, uh, zero to four. So, whatever you name them, just make sure there is five. All right. So, from here, now we want to go into just like we do with all of the other ones. We're going to drag this down. 
copy paste, because I'm gonna do the exact same thing, plug that in here, uh, create a matching event. This is gonna be, is a graphics changed? Yeah, graphics changed. From here, we're gonna go into here, gonna do find option, Sorry, it's gonna be the macro. Find option index, plug that in. And then we are going to set the graphics based upon what that is. Graphics pretty easy. We're now gonna just grab all of this stuff again. I feel like there's another macro I could add over here, but I don't wanna waste more time from you guys. From here, we're gonna set overall scalability and plug it in. All right, and that should be all we need to do. So we go in here and we go to graphics. I'm gonna set this to very low and we'll set that back to just 1080 and hit play. And graphics are garbage, but very low. Go back to settings, graphics. We'll do very high and play. All right, just like that, we now have every single settings that we need. Thank you all for those that withstood the duration of this video. I hope it showed you everything you need to do. Um, it allows a lot of functionality. I'm gonna add a comment here. Uh, we're gonna just do the same thing here, which is just uh, graphics drop down menu selection change. Right, so we're able to now change the display mode, resolution, graphics, and the V-Sync. Uh, we also went through all of the settings. So we have our audio, we have our key bindings. Now this video is quite long, but if you enjoyed all of the settings that we went into, all of the explanations, please, Hit the subscribe button, the like button, join the Discord, all the self promo stuff, and it was great to have you guys. I hope to see you guys in the next videos. For any type of feedback or suggestions, feel free to leave it in the comments or in the Discord. Have a great day.